you take your Bibles this morning and turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 9. We are in a series called, We Are Called, Romans 8, 28, for we are the called according to His purpose. How many know it's His purpose? Romans 12, 9, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, in honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Father, anoint your word in Jesus' name and everyone said, Amen. Okay, I want you to do something for me. It's kind of strange, but I'm going to ask you to do it. Take your finger. Everybody put your finger up. <laughs> Locate your navel and put your finger in it. Your navel. Your belly button. Now, I know this is weird, but it would have been much weirder if I would have said, help your neighbor find theirs. And say that. We have this little hole in our, in our stomach abdomen area and we call that a belly button but how many know that was a sign of something that meant connection <clears throat> we were connected to our mother through the umbilical cord and we have a, a, a remnant of that it didn't completely heal up you might have an innie you might have an outie no matter what it's still a symbol that you were connected. Amen. Amen. Somebody needs you. Somebody gets along in life because they have you in their life. In other words, we need each other. Paul said we are devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. In other words, church, we need each other. And he said it's not a suggestion. It's a command. Love one another. Be dependent. Understand that there is a reason why you're here today. Amen. There is a reason why the person sitting next to you is here with you. Maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's your family member. Maybe it's a good friend. But it's somebody that has something to do with your life. First of all, we need each other. We need each other. Amen. When Adam and Eve were created, it started there. He formed man and said it was good. Adam numbered all of the and named all of the animals, birds of the air, the, the, the mammals, the animals all around. And then he realized that there was no one for him to communicate with. And so for the first time in history, God said, it is not good. It is not good that man be alone. So he made woman. So here is this man now with this woman. And he said this, Adam says this. This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. The point is, is that we need each other. We depend on each other. In the first place, the fact is, number one, again, we need each other. Jonathan needed David. Mm -hmm. Abraham and Lot were cousins. They were connected and they needed each other. Moses had Aaron, his brother. Ruth had Naomi. Mm -hmm. Peter and James and John were joined at the hip. Mary and Martha were sisters. Paul had Barnabas and he had Silas. He was his partner in ministry. They were partners, but they were more than that. They depended on each other. Amen. Yeah. Church, listen. We know how important we are to each other. Amen. In other words, your family, you know who your family is. You know that they're important to you. But do you understand that, that in Christ, in the church, we need each other. Amen. Amen. I don't just need my wife. I need you. You need me. The list goes on and on. We need each other. There was a song. Actually, it was a TV show in the 80s. It was about a local bar in Boston. How many remember that TV show? Cheers. 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 
It was a place where, and the song said this, it's a place where everybody knows your name. Right? Wouldn't it be amazing if you walked into any place, but let's say here, and somebody knew your name, mm -hmm. and they loved you, and you knew that. By the way, don't leave here and say, Pastor says, go find the local bar. <laughs> Make sure they know your name. No, I'm not saying that. But wouldn't it be great if, if in church, when you walked in the door, somebody knew who you were and cared about you? Wouldn't that be awesome if, if the focus would just not be on yourself, but on somebody else? Amen. Amen. What if Maurice walked in the door and he saw somebody and they walked up to him and they hugged him and said, Brother, it's good to see you, man. How you doing? And really cared about how he was doing. See, that's what church is. That's what we're doing here together. We're not here just to hear somebody get up here and rant and rave for about 35 minutes. We're not even here necessarily to stand around and sing songs. That's part of it, but it's not all of it. The second part of this is that we have missed our true calling in the church, as the church. Oftentimes, church, we focus on methods and ministries and monthly schedules and set up the most important thing and that is that church is about people not programs Amen. Dr. Francis Schaeffer noted theologians told a group of ministers back in 1977 unless the church changes its form gets back to community and sharing of lives personal things church is done Reverend Jim Armprister the director of the missions for his symbols of God said eight out of ten Ohioans will not attend church on any given weekend. More of our friends and neighbors will visit a restaurant today or a store than they will church. Eight out of ten. Mm -hmm. If you understand what the population is, let's say of Brentwood and, and Oakley and Antioch and Discovery Bay, you'll understand that more people, many more people are out of church than are in church. Yeah. Right? But see, we also have to understand that this isn't church. This isn't the church. If I go through this door and ask you to follow me, you probably won't. But if I asked you to, and we walked across the street, went into the gym that's in the school over there, how many know that would become church? See, church isn't where you go. Church is who you are. We are not a building. <coughs> We're people. Amen. We're a community of believers. And that's what church is. Church is the mixture of different people with different backgrounds. We are from different homes and different geographies. And yet we're the church. Because we gather together. When Eddie and Vanessa find their body of believers to fellowship with in Arizona, they're the church. Amen. Mm -hmm. If we were to walk outside and just sit down on the lawn and gather together, we'd still be a church. Amen. The reason that this is important, church, is because we need to understand that until we get to the place where it's more about us and less about me, I'll never fully understand what the church is. Thirdly, the definition is the communion of the saints. It's a community of believers joined together through faith in Christ. That's what the definition of church is. Let me tell you what it's not. It's not this building. It's not coming on a Sunday morning for Sunday school or worship service. Did you know that that's not even biblical? I mean, they gather together the first day of the week, they came together. And there was fellowship, there was communion, there was community. Amen? Yeah. We later on made it about programs and schedules and ideas. But that's not the church. Church is when Joey and Angie and I are, are gathered together and we encourage each other, we love each other, we cry with each other, we 
pray with each other, we rejoice with each other. That's church. Amen? Amen. It's when somebody sees you in a store or, or in a restaurant. We were walking into a restaurant last Saturday night, a week ago, Saturday night. We walked into El Camino and we looked over and we saw a couple that we've known for years, part of the church. We hugged each other and we started talking. Right next to them was another couple who didn't know each other, but we knew them. And we started hugging each other and we started talking. We, we were the church. Amen. And we were encouraging each other. We were praying and we were lifting each other up. And, and it was awesome. And, and I realized that, that that's the church. It can be in a Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. It can be outside. It can be in the store. It can be at the gas station. Wherever two or three gather, he said, in my name, I'm in the midst of them. So in other words, the church is, is not a place. It's, a, it's an us. Amen. There's a lyrics from a song from a Christian band. I want to read them to you. You can't go to church, as some people say, the common terminology that we use every day. You can go to a chapel. You can sit in a pew. But you can't go to church because the church is you. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, we can come to the chapel. We can sit in the chair. But, but you can't say we're in church because we are the church. Amen. Amen. It's not about necessarily what I say, but more about who I am and what I do. After a really good service, we sense God's Spirit. We receive an anointed message or, or some great worship happens and we walk out that door and we say, we've been to church. <laughs> but that's where it ends. Oftentimes, that's where it stops. So how do we, how do we fix that? See, it's not where I come to get something for me. It's where we gather together to love, share, pray, to pick each other up. That's why I don't care what you were or whether the worship team hit all the right notes. I was a little drained and down. I came here and you encouraged me. You picked me up. We were praying first service. We had our prayer line here. And somebody from the church came up for prayer and they said, Pastor, I'm here to pray for you. So I let them pray for me yeah. instead of me praying for them. Before that, I was praying for somebody and she came up to me, Paula came up to me and said, Pastor, would you pray for my brother who's going through some more tests? And oh, by the way, my shoulder hurts. Would you pray for me? Here's what's funny. My shoulder's been hurting me for about four weeks. But God said, pray for her. Focus on her instead of your own pain. Pray for her. Mm -hmm. That God would touch her and heal her. What's cool about God is when you start living your life and your Christianity like that, He comes along and He touches you. That's right. Amen. When I prayed for her left, or I mean right shoulder, I said, God, Here's my shoulder. It hurts, but that's not what she needs right now. She needs prayer for me. You were hurting and somebody encouraged you. Amen. Yeah. See, church, that's why the writer said, Paul said, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together. Don't, don't not come together because you need each other. We need each other. So I want to talk about something for a few moments and I'll finish it next week, but I titled this We Versus Me. We Versus Me. Let me tell you how me works. Me focuses on my own salvation. Now I know what you're going to say, Pastor, it's scripture, uh, that we're to work out our own salvation in fear of trembling. But listen, I'm not here just for me. I'm here for you. Amen. Amen. Because when it comes to me, I'm only going to focus on me. It looks for more of what I can get out of today instead of what you can get. See, I get so focused on me that I can't see we. Mm -hmm. It's important. Sister Tina needed a hug today from her pastor. 
And so I got up during worship and I hugged her. Because that's what she wanted and that's what she needed. Church, do you understand that it's not about what I need? Because listen, when I'm more concerned about you, how many know God meets my need? Amen. When I pray for you, how many know God hears for me? That's how it works. Me comes and goes without connecting to anyone. See, I just need to connect with God today, Pastor. I, I don't need anybody else. But you do. Amen. See that little belly button that still tells you that you need connection. Amen. It's not gone completely. Me cautions is very cautious to share personal needs. I have a fear of being vulnerable. I don't want to project to you who I really am because you might not like me. So I put out what I think you might like. Amen. I dress cool, or what I think is cool, and I act nice. You don't see my thoughts, you just hear my words. Amen? Mm -hmm. And you may like me, and so I'm very careful. But what happens is that all I'm doing is covering up who I really am. The me part of it doesn't mind coming to a big service, but I stay away from life groups and home groups because I have to be more real. Mm -hmm. Amen? I have to become vulnerable, and I don't know if I like that. Somebody might judge me. I got news for you. They're judging you anyway. <laughs> so you might as well just come clean. Me is too tired maybe to come to church or I make excuses for why I'm not there. As I said before, me comes to big services but avoids small groups because I might become vulnerable and you might see the scars, you might see who I really am. Let me ask you a question. How many love your kids? Raise your hand. How many love your grandkids? <laughs> see, the grandkids go so far past that, right? <laughs> Let me ask you this question. Are your kids or your grandkids perfect? Yes. Any Vanessa, are your kids perfect? Yes. Are you sure? Yes, yes. they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> she says yes. They're not perfect. Matter of fact, they can be spoiled brats. Right? <laughs> and mom and dad say yes. <laughs> but here's the thing. Eddie, Vanessa, do you love your children? Yes. Would you give your life for them? Yes. Of course you would. See, they know all about them and they love them anyway. Church, listen to me. As the church, we need to know each other and love each other anyway. Amen. Doesn't matter the fact that we're not perfect. We know we're not perfect. Some of us try to act like we are. But we know better, right? So you love them anyway. In fact, you would lay down your life for your children. It's funny because Jesus said, greater love has no man than this. And he laid down his life for a friend. Yeah. And then Jesus said to his disciples, but you are my friends. See, he was telling them he's getting ready to lay down his life for them. That's what we're missing today in the church. So here's what we looks like. Now you've heard about me. This is what we looks like. When I have a me, a we mindset, I'm generous with my time, my talents, and my treasure. I make a point to connect with other people. I'm loved and known by many. People know me and they still love me. My wife has been with me for lo these many years, 39 years. And the miracle of miracles is she still loves me. She knows my faults. Believe me. And then once in a while she'll have to point them out. Because I don't see them, you know, as much as. But she loves me anyway. That's the definition of love. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
is you know the faults, but you love them anyway. When we gather together, I'm willing to be transparent, open, and honest with you. We reaches out to others for prayer. We join small groups and relates with others there. We seldom miss an opportunity to gather together. We connect with the others throughout the week for phone calls, prayer, texts, and visits. I'm going to finish this completely next week. But what I want to leave with you today, church, is that we need to understand the church is not just the hour and a half that we spent here this morning. The church is ongoing. It's every day. Amen. It's people that are around you that really do love you and care about you. Amen. Amen. And when we're open and we're honest and we reveal who we are to them, we're not worried about whether they're going to judge us or not. See, Tony and I know each other. I can tell you a lot about him and Suzanne. I can tell you about their kids. I can tell you about their likes and their dislikes. I can even tell you about their dreams and their visions and their goals. How can I do that? Because I know them. I've taken time to get to know them. I know Gabby and Maurice and their family. I can tell you a lot of things about them, but most of all, I can tell you about their hearts. How do you know, Pastor? Because I know them. I got to know Joey and Angie. Spent time with them. They're like my kids. How do you know them? Just I do. Because I took the time. Amen. Listen to me. That's what church is. Mm -hmm. What I wish is we had about another half an hour or more or so when we that we could break up in small groups and talk to each other and just say, how's your day? How's your week? What's going on in your life? Lupi, are you okay? What's happening? How can I help? See, that's church. Amen. Yeah. This gathering, this building, it's not church. There are people that I know that I haven't talked to in many years. I haven't seen them. I haven't physically been with them. But we love each other unconditionally. We're very close, close friends. And we cannot see each other for months or even a year or two. And yet when we come together, it's like we never left. Right? Why? Because they know you. They know your heart. They, they see inside of you and, and, and they know the essence of who you are. Listen to me. That's what God does. He brings us together. He makes us family. Get some weird relatives. <laughs> no, I just, I do. Raise your hand if you've got some weird relatives. Come on. Look at everybody's raising their hand. <laughs> you know that aunt or that uncle that's just a little off? You know what I'm saying? Or that brother or that sister or that, maybe even mom or dad, I don't know. And it's funny because you love them. You even come to family dinners together still. Amen. <laughs> and here's what you say. If I didn't, they weren't family. There's no way I'd be. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, why do you do that? You do that because they're family. Listen to me. Hear me. We're family. Amen. This church is family. These are my kids. These are, this is my sister. This is my brother. And all in the world. When one part of the body hurts, the whole body hurts. When one part is suffering, the whole suffers with them. When we found out that my wife had cancer, you came around us. You surrounded us as a church. You still do. You still do. Cindy was, um, she was at, uh, my, one of my granddaughters had cheerleading yesterday. She ran into a, a young lady that she knows, we know through another friend, a member of this congregation. It's a young lady 
that we haven't seen for I don't know how many years. And when she saw Cindy, she came up to her and she grabbed her and she hugged her and she kissed her cheek. And she said, I'm so worried about you. I've been praying for you. You would have thought that, that it was a daughter of hers. But it's somebody who we haven't talked to or seen. And really they were a friend of a friend kind of thing. And my wife just told me about it. And she was just blown away at how loving and how caring. Because she heard, this, this young lady heard that, that Cindy was in trouble. That she had cancer to deal with. <laughs> when one part of the body hurts, the whole body hurts. And church is in that moment when they were in a gym in Concord, California. For that brief moment, that was church. Why? Because, because they were together. Amen. I want you to bow your heads all across this room. I'll finish this message next week. Change the direction of Harvest Time Church what we call church. We do that by purposely investing in each other. Amen. See, I'm not just the pastor that stands up here on Sundays and preaches and makes phone calls and does visitation and then this or that. I'm just another brother in Christ who loves his children. Amen. You're his children if you love him. If you've given your life to him, you're his children. Amen. We're brothers and sisters. When you come up to me and say, Pastor, I love you, can I pray for you? my brother and my sister. And we have church. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Oh, okay. That only happens when we invite Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior. You say, aren't we all God's children? Well, none of us would call on His name. Paul the Apostle said, I was religious. I was a, a Jew of Jews. I was zealous. I knew the scripture. I was born and circumcised the eighth day. I, I had it all. But it was really nothing. Because it wasn't about that. It was about relationship. It's about relationship. Listen to me. If Jesus Christ died on the cross for you so that by asking him to come in you can have eternal life how many think that's a that's a great great thing the story that we told a bunch of times is about the young man who hated his dad finally when he was 18 he left He didn't want anything to do with his dad. He loved his mom, but he couldn't stand his dad. Years later, he gets a phone call from his sister saying, Mom's dying. I know you hate dad, but mom wants to see you before she goes. My very good friend, Donnie Moore, used to tell this story, and every time I responded. So the young man came home, and he walked up to the porch, and his sister standing on the porch said, Mom is in the back. He walked down the hall and he turned left into the room. The lights were down. The shades were pulled. He could barely see. But he saw his mom lying on the bed and he rushed to her. And he fell on her and he kissed her. He said, Mom, I'm so sorry that I stayed away so long. As his eyes adjusted to the light, he looked over he saw his father, the, the man that he said he sitting on the other side. 
With her last ounce of strength, she reached over and she grabbed her husband's hand and she grabbed her son's hand. She crossed them together and she died. The husband got up and the son got up and walked around and they met at the foot of the bed. And they embraced, told each other they loved each other, asked forgiveness. Church, listen to me. That's what God did. See, Jesus reached over and he grabbed Father God's hands and he reached over and he grabbed my hand. And he crossed. And when he did, he died. But he gave me hope. If I believe in him, confess him, <coughs> I could have a communion relationship with my Father again. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Is there anyone in this room with this raise your hands and pass I want to ask Jesus to come into my heart. I want Him to be my Lord and my Savior. I don't understand it all. I know I need it. I need forgiveness. I need it. If that's you, you just lift your hand all over the room. Come on. Yes. Anyone else? Anyone else lift their hands and pass and pray for me? I need Jesus. Okay. Let's stand. Church is about relationship. Amen. And we're the church. I want to make an invitation. I want to invite you all to come to the altar. We started at the altar. We'll end at the altar. When you come, you come with this thought in mind. I want to be who God wants me to be. I want to be the church. And I'm willing to stand up, to step up. Come on. Come and let's fill this place. Let's make this commitment to the Lord that we're going to be more than a building. We're going to be more than a name. But we're going to have fellowship with one another. Come on. Fill it out all through in here. There's plenty of room. That we love each other. That we pray for each other. Amen. Joey needs prayer. So does Jimmy. Trust me, I know both of them. They need prayer. <laughs> so guess what? God calls the young man and He calls the older man to come together and pray for each other. Amen? I'm here and Eddie's going to be in Arizona. <laughs> but you know what? God will call the younger man and the older man to come and pray for each other. Encourage each other. I love phones. I do. I love communication because we can always communicate. We can be together, even though we're apart. Amen. Church, we have got to learn to be we instead of me. It's not about what this body can do for me personally. What can I do for you? Amen. I mean, if the world understands that concept, how much more should the church? Right? How much more should we understand that we need each other? Amen. Cindy and I have been pastoring here for almost 23 years. And in that time, we have not only gotten to know you, but we've gotten to love you. But we still need prayer. We still need to encourage each other. Wednesday, we went to the doctor and we got some news initially that wasn't very good. It turned out okay, but initially it wasn't. And we talked about it and we said, you know, we trust God and we put her in his hands. 
for those of you that don't know, Cindy has cancer. And we believe she's on the road to recovery. Amen. Amen. But we trust the Lord for that. But we didn't. We weren't the most encouraged, should I just say, on that Wednesday morning. The next morning, I was getting ready. And the Holy Spirit told me, said to me, you need to pray for her and anoint her with oil every day from now until she's free. And if God can cause me to feel that way towards my wife, how much more do we as family need to come around and surround each other? Amen? Encourage each other. Like this young lady did for her yesterday. I want you to grab the hand of the person next to you. Come on. We're family. Father, we pray for each other right now. Lord, we ask in Jesus' name, God, that you would move and touch and bless. Pour out your spirit upon those that are near us and with us. Father, those we can touch right now and those that are not here right now, but we pray for them anyway. God, would you anoint them and touch them and minister healing, health and wholeness spiritually, Father. Come into their life. Lord, cause us to be we. Us. And not just me. Father, I ask in your name that you would turn this church upside down. That we may become the likeness of Jesus Christ on this earth. We become the hands, we become the feet. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray, bless you. Let the older teach the younger, let the younger minister to the older. In Jesus' name. And Father, may we understand that church is not a place. Church is us. It's we. We are the church. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to give you an assignment. Reach out to somebody this week. Call somebody. Text somebody. Go visit somebody. And see how they're doing. Before you tell them how you're doing, find out how they're doing. Amen? In other words, let's be the church. Let's love one another. Let's encourage one another. Amen? Father, we love you and we praise you. As we leave this place today, God, we leave with a renewed spirit and understanding of who we are. Lord, we're yours. And we need to be there for each other. That's the church. Whether we meet in small groups or Lord, whether we meet together on Sunday mornings, we're still the church. Whether we meet in the store or in a restaurant, we're still the church. If we meet in homes, we're still the church. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want you to love on somebody and hug somebody. Come on. God bless you.